a Steve Mignon here doing the junkyard crawl at Berniston Auto Wrecking in Berniston, Massachusetts with a 1966 Dodge A100 van. Now, a lot of people don't remember the A100. They think of Dodge vans, a, the, the Dodge Caravel, the K car minivan type things right here from 1984 on up. Well, in the 60s, the A series vans, the A100 and the A108 with the longer wheelbase, were Dodge's uh, competition for the Ford Econoline and, of course, the Chevrolet uh, Chevy van. Now, this one here is kind of interesting. It does have a factory radio, and here is where the antenna mount is, kind of interesting. But again, these were largely unchanged from 1964 all the way through 1971 when they went out of production. Although 68 up, you will see a reflector here to uh, abide by federal uh, illumination laws that came into effect in 68. Now these all have a leaf spring beam axle up front and inside this one here, how cool is that? These seats are the Bostrom thin line seats right here seen in all A100 vans. These were also used in 1964 and 65 race Hemi sedan Mopars and of course the 68 race Hemi Barracuda and Darts. So a lot of folks will find these seats in the A100 vans, have them recovered and put them in their super stock replica or restoration. Another source for these seats is the Jeep CJ before the late 70s. Kind of cool. Now this one here is a short wheelbase. The A108 would have extra distance right here, a longer wheelbase, but these are on a 90-inch wheelbase. In 1966, there were a total of 44,726 of these things made, of which three quarters were slant six powered. More on that in a moment. But let's trade places here, Shane, real quick. Now this one here is uh, what they call a panel van. In the back, we don't see a window. But again, it does have windows here for visibility going down the highway to pass or merge. You want to be able to see through here from the driver's seat, and you can. Now inside, here's the inside of this thing here. Very spacious. Again, more of this A100 seat gold. These things here, these are like a couple hundred bucks a piece if you need them at the Mopar Nationals. And then you rebuild them for use in your Superstock. But there's that slant six engine right in there. And again, that's going to be a 225. See the yellow paint on that? That means it's an industrial slant six, which has uh, slightly better valves and bearings than what a passenger car blue slant six or red one uh, from 1965 and earlier. But this is kind of cool. This is a 66 Dodge A100 uh, compact trucks brochure. And then we have the pickup truck version right there. Here's the van. And notice how there's no windows on this one. Kind of weird, right? Well, here's the thing. Dodge would build whatever you wanted in your van. If you look to the left, there's again, there's one with no windows and doors. Kind of neat. And then on the right, here's one with no doors. Look at that. You could get these things without windows and without doors. Nothing over here. And this here is, this is called the panel van. And this is the basic one. It says here, the lower price model, the panel van has rear doors only and is not available with cargo compartment doors on either right or left-hand side. Speaking of right and left-hand side, they actually made a walkthrough. If you look right here, you'll see that uh, this picture shows the doors on the driver's side and this one here on the passenger side. You could actually get this van with doors on both sides for convenient walk through. They're very rare. And in fact, we'll put a link in this video, the Great Texas Mopar Horde out in Texas about a year and a half ago. We found a very early production, like number 600 off the line, 64A100 walk through. That video is cool. That's a rare van that was rust free, very clean Texas piece. This one, well, not so rust free. But the weird thing about this one is right here. No windows. So, again, this was purchased by somebody who wanted security. They didn't want the possibility of somebody breaking the glass and stealing whatever was inside. So, again, this is pretty unusual. And whenever I see a van like this, which is maybe one in a hundred times, I've seen a lot of these A100s, very uncommon not to have windows on the rear, on the rear doors. But I always look for signs of bodywork and repair because, you know, when Stadenko backs this thing up, uh, he's going to be working blind and he's going to bang into stuff. And you're working with the mirrors alone when you don't have windows. Kind of spooky. But, again, like many vehicles here at Berniston Auto Wrecking. This one is a bit of a cargo storage unit. Look at this. Very cool. A, a Camaro grill, 1970, 71, something like that. Probably an SS or a Z because it's blacked out. Kind of cool. And on the other end of the spectrum, <laughs> a Volvo 264 grill or, you know, 244, something like that. It's a little upscale, but there's the Volvo 
logo right there. But again, just beautiful inside of this thing. The original blue paint still in effect. Now these were very much industrial vehicles, unlike a Dodge Dart or a Dodge Monaco, which would have had upholstery and different color paints. These things were all painted in one shot. Everything got painted blue, the floor, the roof, the sides, everything, the wheelhouses, because, you know, who needs to do more than that? Now these were cool. They all had an eight and three quarter rear axle, which on this one is gone, but that's the same basic rear axle assembly that'll handle the same, you know, 383 horsepower or 383 big block like in a Roadrunner. So the eight and three quarters under these things are pretty tough pieces. Meanwhile, over at Ford, they actually used the Falcon six and a half inch ring gear on the little vans, which is a grenade waiting to happen. But again, the eight and three quarter always found in these things. Now let's take a peek here inside. I'm gonna trade spots there, Shane, maybe in Super Shane Richardson, the cameraman, high octane Shane. And then we'll open this door and we'll let you get around and see, we'll trade spots. But again, on this one here, the interior's got it out. Here's that slant six right there underneath the doghouse. And the doghouse, by the way, right there. The trouble with this configuration, which was pioneered in the Ford Econoline, if the driver or passenger wanted to get into the cargo area, you couldn't climb over that. I mean, you could, it wasn't fun. You had to get out and go around. So when Ford reimagined the van in 68 and a half, the Econoline second gen, they actually made it possible for people to get past the, the, the doghouse inside the van so you didn't have to get out, which was a big deal if you were a delivery guy. But anyway, this is basically how they all were. Now this one here, we mentioned it's a 66. Let's trade spots, we'll open this door. Now here is the serial number right here. The only bummer about A100 vans is there's no particular model year designator. So instead, we go to the serial number on and this one here, the stack up is 205021, which tells us it's 1966. And again, if you go to the link on this video, you'll see that Texas auction uh, collection, 64A100 with a number 600, 0604, really rare vehicle with again, doors on both sides. That's a crazy rare A100. It was sold in the auction to somebody, I think for 800 bucks, somebody stole that thing. It was a cool van. But anyway, this is probably the final resting place for this particular Dodge A100 panel van. No doors on this one, but kind of weird with those blocked off rear windows or doors uh, at the back with no windows. Kind of an interesting package. So if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Mag's YouTube channel. We'll be back tomorrow with more junk gun crawl.